Welcome to 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, Episode 100, My Top 10 Feng Shui Tips. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter, Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover feng shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement feng shui tips that you can put to work right away, and usually in about five minutes. Now let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hello and happy Monday to you. This is Katie coming to you for my 100th podcast episode of 5 Minute Feng Shui. I made the joke that uh, it was only two years ago I had a microphone and a margarita. And uh, and it's true. I started just like that. It didn't seem like uh, it was going to be something that uh, was going to take off like it has. And I'm so excited that I've heard from people all over the world. And it's so wonderful to have the opportunity to talk with you personally about feng shui and, and in a more in-depth kind of way. That's been a really, really rewarding part of producing this podcast is it gives me a chance to talk to you more personally about feng shui, about my life and my experience and throw in those little stories and asides that makes feng shui kind of come alive rather than just be sort of a move this here, move that there, and then see what happens. <laughs> so it's uh, it's great to have you today. I'm excited about this episode. I've worked really hard on getting some wonderful stuff together for you and, uh, and special goodies. If, if, if you know me or if you've ever been to any of my conferences, you know I love goodies. I love swag, you know, all that fun stuff that you get. Like if you're a, uh, uh, an Academy Award winner and they give you those big bags, what do they say? There's something worth like $200,000. It's crazy. Well, I, I don't have a $200,000 swag bag to give you and it's got to be virtual just like this podcast is. So I, I have a virtual gift for you, but it is an absolutely 100% real and live gift for you. So stay Stay tuned uh, to the end of this podcast and I will give you uh, the directions of where to go to get your free gift. Now, I do have to say that I'm always thrilled to hear from you about your experience and what your thoughts are about the episode that you've just listened to or maybe things that you've implemented. And when I see those iTunes reviews, it really means a lot to me, but it means even more when I get an email from you. And I want to share a couple of emails that I've received recently from a couple of recent episodes. And I, I really think you when you take the time i want to give a special shout out and a special thank you to teresa zavitsky she is a listener and contacted me with an email just after she listened to podcast episode number 98 how to grant your wish you know, sometimes we try all kinds of things to make things happen. And I love this episode because it gives you a way to kind of create some sort of cosmic uh, movement in your life. If you've tried everything you can to make something happen, sometimes I think you need some sort of little energetic nudge. And that's what that episode was all about. Well, here's what Teresa writes. This episode was perfect timing today. I have a terrible mess with new neighbors and legal issues from that mess, which I need a positive resolution on. I love your podcast and I read your blog often. I appreciate all the clarity and insight I've learned during this journey of feng shui. Maybe one day I can enlist your consultation services. Hey, that's one for the red folder. Now all you need to do is wait to hear from Teresa to see how her Grant Your Wish folder worked out for her. But I hear from so many of my insider Facebook group members uh, that use this technique so often, whether it's to sell a house or like Teresa, get past a legal issue or or even find a new job or 
attract a new a new person in your life and that's what's wonderful about that technique I also received another email from Rihanna and Rihanna says she's actually posted this in iTunes it's an iTunes review and I thank her so much for this Rihanna wrote I look so forward to this podcast every single week it feels like a surprise gift every time I get the notification that a new episode is available Katie's so informative but makes feng shui easy to understand and fun too I've learned many new tips, ideas, and ways to incorporate feng shui into my life to benefit myself and my family. I've learned about my birth element, lucky numbers, and more. Please never stop making this podcast, Katie. You're a superstar. Well, Rihanna, you're a superstar, and I have a gift for you. So thank you so much for that iTunes review. Thank you, Teresa, for writing in. Let us know how that legal mess uh, straightens out. I'm sure it's going to work out beautifully, but I want to thank you for taking the time, both Teresa and and Rihanna for taking the time to write, to post an, uh, an iTunes review, and to let me know how you're doing uh, with, you, with uh, some of the tips that you're learning in 5-Minute Feng Shui. This has got to be one of the most difficult podcasts I've done, to be honest. Some of the tips that I have worked on, I have kept a list on my desk, and I have looked, written these tips down, these 10 tips, and I would go through them, no, that's not really one of the top 10. And I would go over it, and I've sat with this list now <laughs> for two weeks, trying to really refine the absolute top 10 tips that I think make the biggest impact in my life and and that I believe will make the most impact in your life. And so I sat with these 10 tips uh, for the last two weeks, actually. Uh, and uh, while I was getting this, this special gift together for you, I was thinking about this, this episode because this is really one that comes from the heart. I have my tips written out that I want to talk to you about, but I'm really speaking to you directly to you, really from the heart about what I think are the most meaningful ways that you can implement feng shui. And the first one that has always got to be at the absolute top of the list, no matter what, has got to be your front door. And in fact, today I'm doing a cleaning challenge, a 21-day uh, Zen of Clean cleaning challenge on my uh, private Facebook group because I'm talking about how to, how to, um, you know, be one with your home and to to get more enjoyment from your home. And a lot of that can can be derived simply from having a clean home. I mean, just think about when your home is, is clean and it's all, it's all, all the laundry's done, it's put away and it's all sparkly. You walk in the door and you just go, <gasps> and it just feels so good. Well, today's day on the, on, it's day number four, this 21 day challenge. Today's day is about your front door and how important it is. And because it is the mouth of chi. The quality of energy that you have at your front door directly impacts the quality of energy that comes in your door and comes in your life, consequently. So this is why we really, really have to start at the front door because this is the source. This is the point. It's like if we're looking for water, where would we go? We would go to the tap in the in the kitchen. We'd go to the tap in the bathroom. If we're looking for, for water, that's where we would go. If we're looking for energy in our homes, we go to the front door. And we, we do that because this is the source. So whether we're talking about opportunities, money, health, growth, all the things that we want in life start there at your front door. That's why making your front door and having curb appeal is so important. Realtors, are you with me? <laughs> Give me an amen. <laughs> it is so true because that curb appeal really matters. So if you've got a front door and you open it up and the, the, the hinges are creaking or maybe the, the doorknob sticks or the, the bottom of the door drags against the threshold, that's not saying wealth, that's not saying good energy, and this directly impacts your income. It really does. It can impact your ability to grow in your life and to, to find opportunities in your career or your business or to find happiness and health too. But obviously, lots of folks want to talk about the money aspect and that's understandable money is what makes the world go around it's what keeps the lights on right and our our stomachs full so 
I'm not one of those people that said, oh, material things. No, let's be practical about this. The money matters. It absolutely does. And it's so important that our front door says money is welcome here. So let's talk about how we can welcome money into our home through our front door. Number one is make sure that your entrance is beautiful. We talked about that. So important. Use a little feng shui magic too. I'm a big believer in the black hat tip about using a black doormat at the front door. Really important that your doormat looks attractive and I and I really discourage you from putting your family name on on the front uh, mat at the front door. If it says Smith or Jones or whatever the name is, if somebody's walking on your good name, that's not good feng shui. So we don't want to do that. But that black mat, keep your, your doormat really nice and uh, new and, and fresh looking. So important because it will, uh, it will bring opportunities to you. That black color pulls energy in. So that's what I like about it. And always add water there if you can. If you can get a, a fountain or some type of water feature at the front of your house, especially as you are in your front door looking outward over on the left-hand side or in front and making it look like it's flowing toward the house, so good for feng shui and great for money. I can't tell you how good that is. So if you can get water there, do it by all means. Now, make sure there's no blockages. So if you can look out from your front door and you can see a tree right in line with the front door, that's going to block energy from getting to you. So it's so important to make sure that you don't have any blocks. And I, I'm, I'm a tree hugger, but sometimes trees have to go, especially if they're really close to the front door and they're, uh, in, and they're in line with the front door. So we might, it's important that we make sure that we don't have any kind of blockages. And remember, deferred maintenance on your front door is deferred money. It says money, stay away. We don't want that to happen. But what we do want is for our door to be energized and look at it look at it and closely does it need a spark of life add a new door handle set apply a fresh coat of paint or add a new doormat remember black <laughs> to add a surge of money to your door i also like on the inside when you need some money to come to you if you're in a if you're in a little bit of a uh, sticky situation get a nice clear brass bell and ring a bell around your front door on the inside in a clockwise manner three times. When you ring a bell, it dispels old stuck stagnant energy and creates like an open channel for energy to come to your house. Many times people have done this and have told me that they've gotten great news. So I think this is a really good tip is to ring that bell on the inside of the door to three times in a clockwise circle and it will activate and energize you for more money. And of course landscaping matters and so does your front pathway. Make sure that they're beautiful and that they are uh, you've got uh, pretty flowers and plants and that nothing is is uh, dead or looking tired because that means you got some dead tired energy coming into your house and we don't want that. Let's talk about the energy interrupt. This is something that I find people say uh, to me or over the years have told me that my life is stuck. They feel that they are kind of in a rut and energetically that they're not going anywhere. They're not improving. They're not doing badly necessarily, but they're not doing good, right? And that's frustrating when you feel like you're you're stuck in, in cement. Your feet are, are, are stuck in, in glued down to the floor. It just doesn't, uh, it feels frustrating. And this is where you need an energy interrupt. And that means that you've got to start getting some kind of pattern breakage. We got to, there's energy that's just like not moving somewhere. So what I want you to do is look around your house and see where you have any kind of piles of stuff or things or like if you have a door like in a bedroom and maybe you have uh, your bathrobe or house coat that I think some people call it whatever you you have on the back of your door like like pajamas whatever uh, clothing and that kind of thing. If you can't open your bedroom door completely open then that's going to block energy from coming and flowing through your house. We want to make sure that everything is flowing smoothly. I don't like a lot of stuff on the floors. So make sure that you pick things up off of your floor and to get energy moving again. Now, 
we also can do a little feng shui magic too to get things moving again and that is by moving 27 items in your home now you don't have to do this daily just do it once what happens is by moving 27 items that number is nine nine is the number that represents fire fire is the is the is the yang energy that that gets things moving right just think if you were to step on a on on hot coals you'd walk pretty quickly although I did walk on fires with Tony Robbins and <laughs> and I walked normally and I wasn't burned and it was an amazing experience but the point is that we want to get that fire energy so move 27 things around your house to create a pattern interrupt to get some energy moving and sparked again I'm also a big believer in cleaning now many people I've gone into homes and many people will have very neat homes but then when you look a little closer it's grimy and here's what I can say it's vital that you clean your house because old stuck energy it gets trapped in dust and grime and dirt and soap scum that kind of thing so clean it give it a thorough cleaning when you need to change uh, to happen a change to happen you need something to ha to get unstuck in your life I promise you you can get energy flowing and moving again in your life and in your home by simply giving it a good deep clean now let's talk about tip number three no not guess and what I mean by that is we guess at where north or south or east or west is now in traditional Chinese feng shui that I practice it's the type of feng shui that actually uses the the real compass directions so if your front door you're standing at your front door you have a compass and it points southwest or northeast or east or west whatever that direction is then you apply the corners based on the direction that your front door is and then this is presuming that your front door is on the front middle of your home and looking out toward the street uh, there's that's the typical home and the standard front door what's important to know though is that if you're trying to apply feng shui you've got to apply it correctly in order for it to work and many times what happens is people think they're applying feng shui to a particular corner let's say the southwest love corner or the east health corner but they're really doing it in the northwest or maybe they're doing it in the in the south and if you don't take the time to diagram your house and look at it and and create sort of a, a grid a tic-tac-toe kind of grid called the low shoe square that's how you can lay the bagua over your diagram and know exactly what corner is where now the black hat sex says the the front of the house faces north and doors open uh, from the north now we use actual and traditional Chinese feng shui we use actual directions so using a little compass is very helpful to know and when you have a diagram of your house and you have the compass directions and you know that my front door is in the center of my house and it faces south or it faces west or whatever the direction is then that means that the next corner is going to be if it's south it'll be southwest the next corner will be west and so forth it's so important to know exactly where your corners are that prescribed idea that it the back left is always at the southeast wealth corner and the back right is always in the relationship corner doesn't hold in classical Chinese feng shui but if that's works for you then you should do that but it's important that you really understand and see your home diagrammed out and with that low shoe square it's a, I I highly recommend to use a nine grid sort of tic-tac-toe kind of grid called the low shoe square so you just diagram your home and then put nine and divide it up into nine equal squares and those will be each of your corners this will help you to see exactly what is in what corner you may be thinking that your toilet is in the north corner and it's com and it's in the northeast or you may think that your kitchen is in the west corner and it's in the northwest it's so important that you know those distinctions because if you don't then you can't apply feng shui correctly that's what's important so no don't guess all right let's talk about tip number four water is critical 
Water is so important. We are made up mostly of water. We are carried in a sack of water in our mother's belly uh, as we're developing into humans. And it's so important in feng shui too. It, that never changes. We don't often have enough generating water in our homes. And water is so critical for wealth, right? Water is wealth in feng shui. So if you want to really boost your feng shui, consider adding a fountain, a, a, a some type of flowing uh, water feature in your yard or garden, uh, whether that's a fountain or a pond or s any type of water feature or a pool if you want to go all in. Uh, having that type of water feature can make a big difference because it's generating water. Let me tell you what I mean by that. We have different kinds of water just like we have different kinds of money. So in generating water, that means like generating income, right? That's our salary that comes in. And water that is draining water, that's the toilet, that's the shower, that's the bathtub. Those are not generating water. That is that is water that is being depleted, that's draining away. And we need water coming into our lives and generating because that represents money coming into our lives. So that's why we really encourage, and that's why you often hear about feng shui having a, a, a focus on generating water, like with fountains and ponds and pools, because it makes a difference in terms of the money. Just think about, you know, beautiful mansions and uh, private estates. They often have pools. They often have fountains at the front. There is generating water. So we want to pay attention to that type of water and, 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 and not focus so much on the bathroom. Uh, it's so important though that we do check for leaks that because if you are finding that money is running out of your house uh, uh, just too much, you may have an actual water leak. Many times if you'll just go around and look around your house, you'll find that there's a water uh, hose or a faucet or a tap that's just dripping away or maybe you have a toilet that just constantly runs. I know one time we were having some issues with money. It was like every time we turn around there was another bill we we're paying for something else we didn't want to do. And uh, when I <laughs> happened to look underneath my sink one day, there was a, I have a tray, I had a tray under there at the time, and it was full of water. It had been leaking water all this time because our sink didn't have a, a good, uh, a good seal. So make sure that you check all the leaks, check all the water, uh, any kind of drains or pipes or taps, check all those, make sure they're nice and watertight. And then if you want more money, and who doesn't, add a water feature. All right, let's talk about the environment. Your environment really matters. What's surrounding your house it has a direct impact. In fact, your home, the way it's situated in on the landscape is, is actually one of the biggest determinants of the type of feng shui you have. I mean, if you've ever looked at a home that's next to a ditch, <laughs> you know, it's it most of the time those homes don't look very good. Uh, and by and, and by ditch, I mean like a big concrete ditch, not just a, a little swale that, you know, is a seasonal creek or something like that. But what surrounds your house, whether it's a junkyard or a, a neighbor's house that looks run down, a, a cemetery, whatever is around your house is going to put that type of energy toward your house. It's going to impact your house. So if you've got views of a mountain or a lake or a big city view, like out, a, out the a tall high-rise condominium and you can see the beautiful night sky in, in the downtown city lights, those are all beautiful things and they're wonderful and it makes a difference. So if you can find a home that is situa situated around natural features like rivers or lakes, the ocean or mountains, beautiful uh, golf courses, anything like that is going to have a positive benefit for you. Just like anything that surrounds your house that is sloping away or is unattractive or creates uh, some type of a, a feeling that uh, when you look at it, it, it feels like it's draining your energy. And this can be anything, like I said, from a, a bad neighbor to an ugly ditch, something like that. So you, what is surrounding your house is so important. All right, tip number six, the bedroom is where it's at. When it comes to feng shui, we spend a lot of time and attention talking about the bedroom. Why? We spend a lot of time and attention in that room, <laughs> right? Every night, as a matter of fact. Every day we start in our bedroom. Every night we end in our bedroom. Your bed is critical to your relationship. 
your health, your well-being, and your ability to revitalize and re refresh from the day and to to help you feel where you can be focused and and your health is is good and that you have good rest and that your relationship is solid now if your bed is uh is facing a mirror or you have it underneath a window or it's in line with the bathroom that's a very negative uh arrangement let's just talk about what's positive and what's the most important thing that you have in your bedroom in terms of the way it's aligned number one is there's not a mirror in the bedroom and the, the reason you don't want that is because it can cause insomnia it can also create uh, where it, like doubles the number of people in, in the room so if you're two people in the room then you're suddenly four people but mostly it's we don't want to activate and mirrors activate it we want to have a room that's really restful and serene and where we feel relaxed enough for rest and for romance right because this is where love happens that's where your relationship is formed together and, and solidified so we always want to make sure that we don't have any kind of, of mirrors in the bedroom the other thing is we want to make sure that we have a nice well-placed bed and that means that you can see the door that uh, we we want to avoid any type of direct line up with a door uh, where your 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 feet are pointing out a door or it lines up with the bathroom very important that you have a nice solid wall behind you and you have a nice solid headboard because that creates support it's a, that feeling that you're not going alone and doing everything on your own so when you have a nice uh, solid wall behind you and a nice solid headboard it can go a long way toward giving you nice good refreshing sleep and also helping with your relationship as well so we always want to make sure that that bedroom is it's quiet it's serene it, we don't have work things in there there's no exercise equipment we try to avoid having your desk put in there as well we don't want to have any signs of work and the other thing that we don't want to have is uh, too many pictures of other people it's really important that you have only the pictures of the occupants of the room so if you are parents um, the kids pictures can go outside in the living room they can go out in other places in in the in the house it's a lot better if you can have maybe pictures of uh, the two of you from a vacation or some happy time spent together but make that a place that is just for the two of you and that it's just for rest and romance uh, I'm a big fan of canopy beds uh, that's no secret on my feng shui group <laughs> they all know I love canopy beds they're great feng shui they're they're perfect for managing any kind of beams across the ceiling if you have beams uh, across the ceiling that are kind of uh, that are you know over your bed or if you have ceiling fans if you have slanted ceiling so canopies do uh, a lot of great things and hey they're super romantic now let's talk about tip number seven and that's the kitchen the kitchen the bedroom and the front door are in black hat sec those are called the three pillars that's because those are the three critical areas of your home that really have the greatest impact on your life and if you think about it it does the front door where you come into your home typically uh, now unless you've got a garage door but the front door is our symbolic entry to the home so that makes it number one very important number two is our bedroom it's where we sleep every night it's where our relationship uh, and, and our partnerships are, are developed and formed and, and maintained and where we rest and that's so key to our lives and number three is the kitchen and you ask any realtor what's the one room everyone wants to see when they go to look at a house it's the kitchen why it's the heart of the home it's where everybody is uh, it doesn't matter even if you want to keep them out in the living room if you're cooking at the holidays there everybody is <laughs> everyone wants to be in the, where the action is and that's in the kitchen and your kitchen is so important in feng shui we want to make sure that we use it and that we ha have good meals and good food that's fresh and that we keep our pantry organized and our in our refrigerators are cleaned out and looking good that we always make sure that you keep a good clean stove 
you know, one of the things that I focus a lot on is cleaning in my kitchen. And that can even be like cleaning your dishwasher. That's one of the things that we were doing in my, uh, I have a 21 cleaning day cleaning challenge. And one of the things I challenged uh, everyone in, involved to do was to clean their dishwasher. I mean, this is where all your dishes go in dirty and come out clean. And actually it needs to be clean too, just like your oven does. So make sure that your dishwasher is clean regularly. How do you do that? Just throw in some vinegar. Uh, make sure that you pull out the filter that's usually down at the bottom of your dishwasher and clean that out regularly and clean out your stove, your oven, clean the, the, the top of the stove, keep all the burners nice and clean because that clean energy is, is healthy energy for you. And the same thing is true with your oven. You want to make sure that it stays clean. When we are, uh, have clean, fresh, replenished pantries and refrigerators, it, it, it makes us feel good uh, just from a health standpoint when I don't know about you but when you open up the refrigerator and you've got a science project in there or some zucchini that has just like turned into liquid at the bottom of the the crisper it it never feels good it, you have kind of an icky feeling when you when you look at that that's why you know having it uh, refreshed and clean and throwing stuff out before it becomes icky is really good now let's talk about some of the magic of, of your kitchen and that is your stove. It represents it represents the energy, the heart of the home. It re represents the stomach and feeding the stomach. This is your whole center of your your body, your your abdominal region, and that is also tied to your relationships. The relationship corner or the southwest corner is the love corner. It's known as the love corner. And many times what I find is when I have single clients, I ask them, you know, what, tell me what you cook for dinner. What do you typically cook? Well, salad, or I throw a, I throw a microwave dinner in the microwave. Well, when I hear that, I'm hearing that the, the fire energy isn't going on in, in the home. And the fire energy relates directly to our heart and to because actually fire is related to the eyes and heart well, who do, what do we eat with uh, we eat with our eyes right we see the food on the plate we eat with our eyes and then our uh, abdominal region this is fed by fire uh, it's it's related to to earth and when you cook and you have that fire energy going it feeds your relationships let me tell you you want to make a family happy put a nice meal on the table it's amazing what it can do and it's also important that we use our kitchen frequently and we cook frequently and you know how you do use that one burner all the time move it around uh, make sure that your whole stove is frequently used and that you have uh, plenty of fire energy and I like this little tip too and that is to even put like a little kitchen night light in your in your kitchen and if you if you only have an electric stove like for instance I only have an electric stove and uh, one of the things I like is to put one of those little fake little candles that look like uh, a jumping flame always have a little light on in your kitchen that means that the flame and the fire uh, that keeps the heart of the house going is always lit Isn't that a beautiful thought I think that's a, a beautiful sentiment now also in your kitchen when you're looking around make sure you don't have any dented pans that you don't have any scratch dishes or chip dishes those are just really bad feng shui and it can create sort of a, a poverty kind of loop we don't want to do that so make sure your dishes are all are all in good repair and your pots aren't scratched or dented that kind of thing keep the kitchen sharp and looking good and you're going to feel good and it's going to be better for your health your wealth and your relationships that's the big three right now tip number eight is don't stress about your bathrooms Lots of folks worry about, oh, it's bad feng shui and I don't want to have a toilet and we're in this corner. It's going to hurt that corner and that kind of thing. And you know what? I wouldn't want to live without uh, indoor plumbing. <laughs> and I know you don't want to either. And I just want to say, don't stress about a bathroom. Now, you don't want to make it into a palace and with lots of candles and plants and all that kind of stuff. I would say, you know, keep it nice and neat and kind of spare, just like you would see like at a hotel. You don't want to have it too dressed up or anything like that. That doesn't mean you can't have marble counters and that kind of thing. You certainly can. But what I'm saying is you don't want to have uh, a lot of, of activation in there. So some people will say, oh, activate your bathroom 
bathroom, put plants and this and that and the other. And, and actually we don't want to activate a bathroom because that's activating that draining water energy and waste energy. And we don't want to activate that. So go ahead and, and just leave, leave your bathroom feng shui worries aside. Just close the door. If you're concerned because your bathroom is in the relationship sector, then here's what you need to do. Activate the small Tai Chi. This is so important. Activate the small Tai Chi. This is where you, instead of activating the southwest corner and putting candles and love objects in the bathroom, because that's where your love corner is, you do that in the southwest corner of your living room. So wherever you have a bathroom, if you say, oh, well, in the northwest corner, that's my heaven location and helpful people. And uh, this is where you're going to want to activate in the northwest corner of the living room, right? So we're not going to activate a bathroom. We're going to activate that corresponding corner in that corner of our living room as best you can. And that will help you still get the benefits of activating the whatever the corner is that your bathroom is falling in without activating the bathroom and the waste energy and the draining water because that's what we don't want to activate. But we also don't want you to be stressed about your bathroom because there's nothing to be stressed about. Just, you know, use it like a regular bathroom and don't worry about it. All right, we are on to tip number nine and that is beautify and regularly update. Keeping your house up to date and, and attractive is a great way to keep the energy uh, moving around the house, keep it updated, keep it fresh. And just sometimes moving furniture around can make a difference in the way we look at our house and interact in our house. I find that sometimes I can just redecorate by just moving things around and you can do the same thing too. And by doing that, you're kind of moving some energy and helping it get unstuck. You're also uh, helping to update if you, maybe you do a little renovation, a little redecorating that's always great for your house it's just like wearing clothes uh, we we don't want to wear the same clothes that we wore when we were in high school because we would look like we were stuck in a time warp right we don't want to do that with our house either so if you've still got harvest gold appliances and i know some there are some out there <laughs> you know uh it, it might be a good idea to just get a little update going in your house to bring up the level of energy in your life all right well we are at tip number 10 and that is my home and I are one when I do things that are beneficial for me in my home and and that help bring up the energy of my home and clean it and keep it in good repair I keep my life in good repair I keep my energy level up I feel better. Just notice yourself looking at a scuff on the wall. Maybe you have like a, a door that, that banged into a wall or a kid that kicked the wall and now there's a scuff mark on it. Every day you walk into your house, your eyes are probably drawn to that, that scuff mark. Every time there is a, a, a problem, a repair that needs to be made, something broken, it it affects your energy. You know how that is. You you walk in. You I know. I'm sure you've seen something like at the. This happens a lot. Where in the in the garage, many people enter their homes through the garage, and maybe there's a, a stack of papers or some trash by the back door. And every time you come home, you're looking at that trash or that stack of papers, and you think, Oh, I should be getting that. I should do that. I should fix it. I should throw that away. And you don't. And what it does though is that you can feel your energy sink. And what we want to do is raise our energy because every time we do something that benefits our house, it benefits us. We want to ensure that our homes are lifting our energy and preserving our energy. And that will help us create more ripples outward in life that bring those ripples of opportunity, of love, of happiness, of income, and and the successful things that are material that we enjoy, like nice trips or pretty jewelry or a nice car, things that we want to go shopping for that we enjoy. That's what life is about is enjoying. And when we work on our homes and bring up our home's energy, we bring up our own energy. There's no better better way to describe it than when you walk into your home and it's freshly cleaned or all the laundry's put away. There's just such a satisfying feeling. You feel yourself take a deep exhale when when you see that you just let all the air out because it's it feels so relaxing you just 
it feels good to be in a clean home or to come in and you see a nice meal set on the table. So when you think about your home, be thinking about the changes or the repairs or the things that you're doing to it as having an effect on your life because it does. We know that our home is is something that we wear around us energetically and physically in the in the in the walls. We're we're our body holds our spirit and our home holds our body. And we want to make sure that the thing, the home that surrounds us is as good as it can be. We don't all have to live in a mansion or uh, have a designer home to have a home that supports and refreshes us and that brings us the type of energy and opportunity that helps us grow in our lives. And that's what is important to understand. It's not the size of the home. It's not the, the marble on the floors or anything like that. It's Is it clean? Is it kept up? Is it in good repair? And does it support us or do, does it bring down our energy? That's so key. And these are all of the basic tips summed up in one as my home and I are one. Well, I hope today's episode was fun for you. It was fun for me talking about these really basic but very important and foundational concepts in feng shui. Even though um, these are the my top 10 tips, I, I, I gave you a lot more with each one of the tips, but they're, they're, they're more about subjects and the subjects of, of feng shui and the top 10 subjects and the things that matter most in your feng shui and how it can support you in your life and and in, in your happiness and well-being. That's what's so key. And that's what I love about feng shui because when something isn't working in my life, something's usually not working in my house. And conversely, when I feel good in my home, I feel great in my life. Thank you so much for listening to 5-Minute Feng Shui. And as I promised, I am leaving you with a free gift. It is my top 100 tips ebook just for listening to today's podcast. Uh, all you have to do is go to redlotusletter.com forward slash top 100. Once you're there, just follow the clicks and links and you'll get your download in just a moment. As always, it's great talking with you. I am so honored and proud to be talking with you for this 100th episode. And thank you so much for listening in. As always, if you'd care to leave an iTunes review, I'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to send me an email, I'd love to hear from you there too. So send it to me at katie at redlotusletter.com. And in the meantime, don't forget, get your free download today at redlotusletter.com forward slash top 100. Thanks for listening. Have a fantastic week and I will talk to you on the next episode of 5-Minute Feng Shui. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of 5-Minute Feng Shui. If you did, please be sure to share this episode with your friends on social media and let's change the world one home at a time. For more Feng Shui information and inspiration, sign up for my free weekly Feng Shui easy. Just drop by redlotusletter.com to sign up and I'll be in your inbox every Wednesday. And if you like this episode, I'd love it if you left a review on iTunes. If you do, send me the screenshot of your review to katie at redlotusletter.com with iTunes review in the subject line. And I'll send you a free gift as my thank you. I'll see you next week on the next episode of 5-Minute Feng Shui.